The idea of suppression goes back to Theodore Roosevelt, doesn't it? I sort of recall the ongoing debate between Muir and Roosevelt's administrator. I can't recall the details. Reply. James T. Parsons. Ed Evans, as with many things it's a Goldilocks idea. It isn't to either always suppress or never suppress. These firestorms are getting too big with too much fuel. We cannot let a firestorm burn without suppression. That was the 1988 Yellowstone issue, and on one day the fire burned 150,000 acres, in a day. Other extreme fires show the risk. The Great Fire of 1910 burned 3 million acres over several days. The Peshtigo Complex, including the Great Chicago Fire driven by a 110 mph wind field, burned 5 million acres. We cannot control a firestorm dragon once it is unleashed. If there is too much fuel load and the fire cannot be fully extinguished before winds are high, simply too risky. But we also cannot allow 30 years of brush and dead trees to sit as fuel. That is our current problem. It's too explosive. The answer is to mechanically remove dead slash dying logs and allow those to be harvested, reducing fuel loads. With pine or cedars, evergreen, I think we find ways to render the needles into pellets for turbines, if they have to burn get a benefit. Once the fuel loads are reduced then some careful prescribed burns are likely suggested. We ideally don't want extremely overgrown forests but we also don't want barren areas. For areas like California and Texas, we need to maximize solar generation in the summer. If we can limit the need for turbines in those areas especially then on summer, we might suppress regional CO2 generated by a feedback loop of power to AC, which gets hotter in that region, requiring more power, more turbine CO2, more heat, etc. We can put those solar panels over parking lots, and use the EV batteries in the day to hold the power. By reducing regional CO2 we can help suppress heat domes. With less heat, more regular rain, less dead or kindling fuel.